फाइव सेकेंड्स टू गो स्टार्ट इंडिया लाइज इन ए फॉर्चुनेट जियोग्राफी क्रेडल्ड बिटवीन टू आर्म्स ऑफ द इंडियन ओशियन एंड नेचुरली बैरिकेडेड बाय द हिमालयास a scorching desert and lightly traveled tropical forests we are not easily vulnerable yet we have faced invasions through the hindu kush through burma and from across the oceans this dynamic continuous today manifested in punch sector last week when pakistanis crossed the loc and shot five indian soldiers dead our political sovereignty has been best assured when relationships with our neighbors have been fortified through strategic ties these regional allies are the mandals or interconnecting circles that kotilya's arth shastra describes as vital to our security sadly our geographical blessings have been more than offset by our historical blunders particularly recently when inconsistent ill conceived and immature foreign policy has caused the near dismantling of kotilya's rajmandala beginning with bhutan which loves us or did until upa mandarins interfered in its elections cutting off fuel subsidies and reducing it to begging terms our gain bluntly pointing out that it cannot deal with china independently now bhutan is witnessing wide spread anti india demonstrations instead of hegemonic displays we need to nurture the relationship through increased investment in bhutan's power and tourism sectors which will also stimulate industrialization in our north east despite being birthed through indian midwifery bangladesh's growing anti india islamic tilt and illegal migration to our north east remain irritants with a pro india government coming to power we squandered an opportunity to improve relations instead of operationalizing the land boundary protocol dating back to the 1974 mujib indra land agreement which resolves 6.4 km of undemarcated border and building trust we resorted to legal hokum we need to ink the tista water sharing treaty which gives bangladesh 25% of its waters despite 40% of the river flowing through it as well as finalize a strategic transit pact regulating access to our northeast in sri lanka mahinda rajapaksha has offered the hamantota port to the chinese whilst expropriating iocs oil bunkers in trincomalee our reaction to protests against training sri lankan officers was to expel them probably all the way to china or pakistan voting against sri lanka in international fora does little for our remaining influence with the establishment more investments in energy and infrastructure particularly in north east and southern sri lanka could help balance its pro china proclivity a new maldives government invalidated its airport agreement with gmr we froze our aid delayed infrastructure commitments and interfered in its upcoming elections the killing of five indian soldiers near the line of control loc was undoubtedly the handy work of the pakistan army without the knowledge of prime minister nawaz sharif so what should india do india should know that normalization of relations with pakistan where all the stakeholders are on board are necessary for peace on the loc in afghanistan 
and on the disputed border with China. Thus, while allowing its army to hit across the LOC at the right time and place, Delhi should accept the friendship hand of the Nawaz Sharif government. Alongside, India should open talks with the Pakistan Chief of Army Staff, COAS. While many in Delhi will dismiss this as SC9, the US nearly pulled this rabbit out of the hat in December 2010. Writing in his book, The Dispensable Nation, Wali Nasser, the senior advisor to Richard Holbrook, former U.S. Special Representative for Afghanistan and Pakistan, says that Holbrook had persuaded General Kayani to agree in principle to talks with India over Afghanistan and Afghanistan only. With this assurance, Holbrook met an unnamed Indian diplomat over dinner in the U.S. on December 6, 2010. According to Nasser, the Indian diplomat took this message to Delhi and shortly thereafter a message came from Delhi that Prime Minister Manmohan Singh had given the green light. The meeting never took place as Holbrook died within a week. The Nasser incident is about the Pakistan COAS talking with India on Afghanistan. The reason this could not include Kashmir is because India would not be agreeable to overt U.S. intervention. Regarding bilateral talks, the unusual Pakistan army gesture of reaching out to India is worth mentioning. The then Pakistan ISI chief, Lieutenant General Shuza Pasha, had floated the idea of parallel talks with the Pakistan army in a meeting with all three Indian Defence Services chiefs in his office July 3, 2009. India did not respond and the matter ended. The important thing is that General Kayani would not have accepted talks with India any less than the Prime Minister's office. Moreover, he cannot be seen taking orders from Islamabad. At the height of the Kashmir insurgency in 1992, when the Indian army had moved large numbers in the valley and Pakistan feared a sudden attack across the LOC, General S.F. Rodriguez, after clearance from Defence Minister Sharad Pawar, had written to his counterpart General Asif Nawaz Janjua to visit the LOC and review things for himself. This invitation was not accepted because the Pakistani army felt it was on top of the situation and the invite had come from the Indian COAS. After the 26-11 attacks, Pakistani President Asif Jardari had offered to send the ISI chief to Delhi to help Indian investigations. General Kayani ridiculed its, his president's suggestion even before India could react to the offer. Stop.